are here to do our squawking seven, our top seven saddest moments on Fear the Walking Dead. <laughs> I could literally fill up the top five with just John and June stuff, but mm. I didn't go that route. I did diversify a little. I do have some other a stuff. Little. It's four John and June things <laughs> and one something else. My number seven is Nick dying. Wow. Okay. I can't believe that made your list. Because it was know. very sad. And it was sad because after rewatching season four, several hundred times and i did watch the first five episodes of season one so i did see season one nick he could have been somebody better Mm. and he was on that path what made it so sad was that he was learning from the mistake that he made but thinking that killing ennis was going to make everything better and make him feel better and it and it didn't it didn't help him at all it just made it worse and he had come to that realization and he was asking morgan for help and then charlie killed him and i'm not mad at charlie this is not charlie hate Because I've always said I totally understand where Charlie was coming from. She was just a kid. He had just murdered her caretaker brutally. Mm -hmm. But I can see how it was very, very sad to lose someone who had the potential that Nick had. Mm -hmm. My number seven is when Travis finds out Chris was killed. Not Chris dying. I don't care. But when Travis Travis finds out. Man, I remember watching it for the first time and Silas was still pretty little at the time. And I just remember thinking how I would have reacted in a situation like that. He couldn't even be there for his kid in these final moments. It wasn't your typical, oh, I got bit. And then he slowly succumbs. No, no, no. These little assholes straight up murdered Chris. And then Travis finds out. They tell Travis and watching him beat the ever living shit out of these dudes was so satisfying. And then stupid Madison's on the other side of the door, like, Travis, don't. I'm like, shut up. No, kick their ass. They killed your kid. Sad and also satisfying at the same time. These are both on my list, but I can't talk about them. (laughs) (laughs) I haven't seen that episode. I have watched recaps and stuff. I do know the basics of what happened. And Mm -hmm. I did watch most of season one. So I know Travis and Chris, and I can definitely see how that was very, very sad. Chris definitely loses it mentally and in a world where things are already fucked up it was hard to watch chris decline like that and then because i liked chris in the first season at first he yeah. Was, yeah, yeah he was he was like an activist kind of kid maybe a little stupid but who the fuck isn't stupid when you're a teenager my number seven is surprising even to me as i just reread this <laughs> i don't remember writing this but the episode where we go into troy's backstory his childhood and Everything that happened between him and his parents with his dad being an abusive alcoholic and his mom being abused and also an alcoholic. It's a really weird telling of the story through the videos when they Mm -hmm. were recording the different ads for the video series that he was going to sell, but also to sell the plot of land on the ranch it gave you a lot of insight into why he was such a freaking weirdo not a hundred percent because you know experimenting on people was pretty weird i just thought it was really sad to find that out about him just gave you more context and it humanizes a character that you really disliked until that point again i did not watch those seasons so i don't know (laughs) that much about it but i do know that everybody's favorite troy moment is madison whacking him in the head with a hammer i mean that was pretty awesome (laughs) <laughs> mm-hmm. my number six everybody's gonna be like what all right it's very controversial it's martha and hank i'm saying that okay. because i put myself in the position that she was in the world is going to shit you're trying to get yeah. away with your husband and someone hits you and your husband is dying and you're watching him die and there's nothing you can do to help mm. there's no one you can go to for help there's nothing you can do all you can do is just sit there and watch him die yeah. and to me that is incredibly incredibly crushing everybody hates martha (laughs) and i get it i get it but i also get why she was doing this shit she did not everybody can be a fucking mentally strong superhero during the apocalypse people are gonna break Mm -hmm. the fact is none of us know what we would do we could be one of those people that would break in that situation who the hell knows i can pretty much guarantee it i'm not mentally (laughs) okay (laughs) now (laughs) i would probably be martha in the apocalypse you just never know how you would react. I think that was super sad, her having to watch her husband die in front of her and not be able to do anything to help him. I know it happens a lot in the show, in, in the yeah. shows, but they showed us what mm-hmm. she had to go through. It was especially sad watching her try to flag down all the cars driving by 
one after another. And she's like, somebody will stop, right? They'll stop. Somebody will stop. It was juxtaposed with the orange backpack guy in Walking Dead. Mm -hmm. They're not stopping. If you've watched both franchises, you understand. You don't stop because it's not safe. You don't know that person. You don't stop and pick up anyone on the side of the road now. But when you don't stop, what does it cost? Mm -hmm. Orange backpack guy died. Hank died. Even had somebody stop to help. I don't there was nothing they could do. Help no, from. he was. But no. she had to go through that completely alone, knowing that there that nobody would stop and help. Mm-hmm. Number six, Liza's death. Oh my god, I didn't even think of that. <laughs> yeah, that's uh... Liza is Chris's mom, and she gets bit. She knows it, and everybody knows what happened. This is really, really early on, and she's like, no, everybody turns. You got to put me down, and man, Travis just has this moment with her that's just really beautiful, even though they're exes. You can tell that they still really care about each other because of Chris, and we don't see it happen. The camera's actually focusing on Chris and Alicia at the time, I think, and we just hear the gunshot. Your gut just drops because you know what just had to happen, and Chris and Alicia go running and you see Chris sobbing over his mom. And it's just, oh, it was just gut wrenching. I've watched that scene in a recap, but it's been a long time. But I thought that Madison came and did it for him. I thought that too, but no, I just looked it up. It's Travis that does it. Maybe she offers and then he. She had the gun first. She asks Madison to do it. Yeah. Oh, okay. 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 Because she says they're standing there. They're standing there when Travis comes up. And then he does do it. She should have just fucking done it. Okay, so I take it back. This is another thing she did wrong. (laughs) Great. (laughs) Never mind. There's no redemption for you. I'm sorry. Now you have asthma and you're stealing eggs. You tried. In this economy. (laughs) Damn it, Madison. (laughs) You tried. It's not even about you and I'm still mad. I'm just kidding. (laughs) It's fine. My number six is the point where Griselda is haunting daniel not really hallucinations and daniel completely loses it and sets the house on fire Mm. but is in it that's the first time he thought he was a goner (laughs) as we went through our top characters he's my favorite character from fear and so i really struggled with that moment because he was just so far gone at that time he was not okay but who would be all of a sudden the world fell apart and your wife is dead and now you're in mexico within a couple days span of time because how many weeks could that be it couldn't have been that long the boat's the longest portion of time maybe a month yeah maybe he's a tough guy but that was the love of his life it's just really heartbreaking to see again you don't know how you're gonna react yeah he didn't get to have the closure of a funeral service or anything they had just had to leave her we're saying it's cool when daniel kind of lost his mind but when rick did it he- <laughs> when rick did it he's a little bitch <laughs> get over it. he yeah you just sucks. see rick burning down the whole prison <laughs> <laughs> i love that so far bridget and i have picked season one through three <laughs> Shin. Shin is just like okay <laughs> it continues for a little while for me yeah. my number five is sarah lets wendell go at the end of breathe with me <sighs> that's Man. a rough one do i even need to talk about it because wendell is her brother that's what her purpose is and we see how happy she is when they get reunited after burying her next to jasper's leg Sarah knows that he's safe, but she can't see him and she can't talk to him. But she makes the decision to let him go for his own good and his own safety. Oh, man. Gut punch. It's not on my list because I refuse to believe that that ever happened. I watched it, but I don't like it. (laughs) (laughs) It just didn't happen. (laughs) My number five, John finds Janice. Oh. 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 Yeah, that yep. was rough. Mm-hmm. We all kind of knew what was going on as he walked up there. And I think it was sad, not only because we lose Janice, that's sad. This is a huge power move that Virginia just put on John. She literally just got done telling John that story of that crazy guy that did this at her village or whatever. And you get the impression that she was disgusted by it, but really, obviously she was cooking up to something and this was it. And unfortunately we saw Janice suffer all that. Oh my God. Just the way Garrett delivers that line. Oh no, Janice. It breaks my heart every time. Oh, those words just ring in my ears. And that was before we knew that that's the beginning of his ultimate yeah downfall is the loss of janice that move is what made him give it up at the end 
Mm-hmm. It didn't help that she was in half. Oof. Right. right. Uh, we just put her back together and stitch her up. She'll be, she'll she'll be, be okay. fine. She'll put a band aid on it. <laughs> oh, walk it off, Janice. Sorry. Walk it off. <laughs> walk it off. No. No. <laughs> Oh my gosh. We're going to have to watch something funny after this. <laughs> I just flipped my phone and in the process, apparently moved everything down one number and then accidentally typed in no. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That was weird. Your phone is anyway, magic. My number five was Chris's death, but also what it does to Travis. It's the before and after for Travis because both are sad. While I did not love Chris, <laughs> okay, I liked him at the beginning. Again, as I've watched it more and more, I have softened over time to some characters. He's one of them because I've been a teenager with a parent who was dating someone else and the other one wasn't. My mm-hmm. mom was not dating but my dad was and i will say i have felt that angry i understand where it comes from i hated it because while chris he had done some messed up stuff wasn't really thinking straight to be fair i don't know that he was gonna kill alicia i don't know that any of us knew that what he was doing was creepy but i don't know what he was gonna do but yeah i don't know what he was gonna do who knows them jumping to that was the last straw kind of broke him at that point, these people aren't my family. And now they're showing that they're, they're definitely not my family. He leaves and I start to think maybe he can move on with these guys. Because in this sense, he's made for this world. He can do the tough stuff that nobody else wants to do. He's going to lie, cheat and steal to get whatever he needs. Technically, this world is made for him. Mm-hmm. He should be able to be successful in it. And all of that is taken away from him, from these a-holes that shoot him because... He flew through the car windshield, but he looked pretty fine to me. He could have probably made it. But then the fact that those kids had the audacity to go and then share that information with Travis is baffling to me. They're idiots and they deserved every punch that they were given. But seeing Travis break like that was what made that really hard because he was not that type of person he was the fight against Madison and against her willing to do whatever it takes for my family. He was the steadfast. You have to do what's right. Mm -hmm. And we lost that in that scene. That is sad to lose someone who going back to John, because John losing Janice is what broke him. He loved Janice, but he wasn't in love with Janice, but he loved Janice. It just broke him to the point that he couldn't come back from it. He just coped in a very different way than travis did my number four rachel dies to save baby mo that is a super sad one that was absolutely gutting i know we talked about it the other night and rachel like you said to watch her do what she was doing and you don't understand what she's doing until she stabs herself she knew she wasn't gonna live but she sacrificed herself to save it baby but my question is why the fuck was she off on her own i know everybody was scattering because of the bombs or whatever but how the fuck did she end up on her own with the baby She was the only one by herself. Two groups here and there, and then Rachel. They just wanted to contrive a way for Morgan and Grace to be baby stealers. That's a precursor to Madison. They're the original, the OG baby stealers. We're just testing out that storyline. Have you guys ever seen the movie Cargo? I've seen clips from it, but I haven't watched the whole thing. Because it is what that is based on. The writers would probably never admit that. But that's based on Cargo because it's it's the same story. It's great. It's got Martin Freeman in it, and it's awesome. Very well done. The movie's devastating, so seeing it as this little homage in the scene is Mm. super sad. We love Bridget. It's always different when you know the actors, right? You always feel (laughs) a little differently about the characters, right? And then to watch her go out like that was just heartbreaking. And she did a great job. It was heroic, too, though. It was, I would say, an honorable death. One of the better ways to go. Very good Good boy, boy, Rufus. He gets beans forever in doggy heaven. <laughs> My number four, Daniel finds Ophelia. Mm-hmm. Minutes. Yeah. He shows up minutes, maybe even seconds after she dies. Yeah. With fucking Madison again. Ugh, this bitch is everywhere where there's tragedy. To be but, fair, oh she didn't gosh. do it. <laughs> no, she didn't. She didn't. <laughs> I'm not blaming her for 
I'm not blaming her. But she was there. blaming her for being there. She, she was there breathing. <laughs> oh, she, she, the was, she was near. She was nearby. It's her fault. Watching Madison and Ophelia, and they're like, "He's gonna be here. He's he's on his way. He's on his way." And and then all of a sudden, Ophelia dies, and and then the headlights come up, and you're like, "Nah, why weren't you a minute sooner?" And then he gets out, and the way he's talking to, her and he's like, "Ophelia, wake up!" And oh. Uh, <laughs> and I really, really love the character. I really thought Ophelia could have went on. She would have had, I think, a really nice arc starting out as this meek, not so tough girl mm-hmm. to what she turns into. And she could have been so much more. She still had a lot of story ahead of her. So it was not cool to lose her. My number four is Daniel's backstory. We get flashbacks and stories of his oh. childhood strewn throughout several episodes. And I have to say, it's one of the saddest stories. And I think it's because one, it's not anything that any of us in our lives could feasibly experience or understand. He came from a small village where all the men were murdered and laid in the river, which then Daniel finds, which is horrifying as a child. And then he's a child soldier after that. His backstory is horrible. <laughs> Thus ends the non John and June portion of my list. Ah, okay. <laughs> Part one, two, and three are basically interchangeable. The saddest one is the one I'm watching at that moment. I'm putting them in an order, but the order really doesn't matter because they're all the same. My number three is the fork in the road when drives away from June. <sighs> what killed me was I always knew that Virginia was going to separate them. That was the given. I was so glad when she got them back together. But she destroyed their relationship from the inside. She planted that poison in John. And that was the first time we really saw it express itself. That he was just so far gone. Not even June was enough for him anymore. Rachel, I remember the podcast we did for that one. You and I cried. We were both the crying. The whole episode. The whole episode. We were both in tears at the beginning. We couldn't even talk about it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Anytime it was brought up, we were just like... <laughs> <laughs> it was just so gutting to see John that fucking broken. I know they had written another scene where they showed June's reaction to seeing John drive away, but because they had a problem with the truck and it was time constraints, so they didn't film it. And I am so thankful that they did not film that scene because I don't think I could have dealt with it. This one was bad enough. We didn't even know how bad it would get from there, and it was that bad. My number three... Uh, I know it's going to be on your list when June puts down puts down That's your Walker, number John. three. I am That's my number three. This. Not even John dying. It was sad, but the whole scene from June in the cabin, seeing him outside, running out there, holding his head, mm-hmm. ugh, taking it all in. It gives you mm-hmm. hope for like a for that split second. second. Yeah, and then you see oh. his Walker face. I was crying so hard the first time I watched that. Silas came out of his bedroom and was like, Mama, are you okay? (laughs) I screamed during my initial watch of that episode. I was convulsing with sobs. I had to call Rachel. I was texting Rachel. Rachel, Rachel, I need you. I think I was still sleeping. Wasn't I still sleeping? You were still sleeping. Because you were watching it at three o'clock in the morning at the time. No, oh, I was at work. I watched it at work that morning, oh, and then I had to okay. stay at work all but for I was eight still hours. Sleeping. Why after did you it. do that? Oh, I didn't know what was going to happen. <laughs> but then I had to wake up and watch it immediately. I'm drinking coffee and watching this and sobbing, <laughs> dripping tears into my coffee. The night before. Jenna had texted me and she goes, do you know when the episode's going to premiere? <laughs> well, I don't know. It could be midnight. It could be 3 a.m. It could be tomorrow morning. I said, I don't know. I said, I'm going to watch it in the morning because I can't stay up till three. I have to work tomorrow. Oh, okay. But I was like, why would she ask me? Don't you fucking work for AMC? <laughs> okay. But I, I was like, okay, whatever. But then the next morning I watched it and John died and she wanted to know what time I would be texting her freaking out mm-hmm. about it. 8.49 in the morning. What? <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, I know. With your finger, with these fingers. <laughs> Sorry, typing. <laughs> what is the worst possible thing they could do to John and June in my eyes? And that was it. And they fucking did it. Also, props to Jenna who sat on that from September of like 20, two years, twenty nineteen, mm-hmm. until 
until it came out in yeah 2020 what was it 2021 21 21 it was two years yeah it was two it was two years because i was still at my (sighs) old apartment when i watched it i remember (sighs) bridget's number three nick's death we already talked about it you guys Mm -hmm. stole the wind for my sales (laughs) why is it sad for you i said why it was sad for me why was it sad for you okay well i watched from the beginning because I was obsessed with The Walking Dead and I watched all of the webisodes as soon as they came out. Anytime there was any new content, I was just frothing at the mouth for it. When Fear started, I was so excited. I did not stay as consistent with Fear as I did with The Walking Dead. I cannot tell you when I stopped watching it, but I did stop watching it at at one point. But as such, I loved Nick at the beginning. I thought he was kind of an asshole. He's very selfishly motivated. He's working through his shit. But I liked him because he was deeply flawed. And there was just something really likable about that. At the time, the fear would have come out. Because when did it start? 2015. I would have been living in Milwaukee at the time by myself in a little apartment that I really loved. That was not the bad part. If you've heard me talk about anything serious, you know I was in an abusive relationship. And I drank a lot. This spoke to me on a deeper level. If the zombie apocalypse had hit... During that time, I would not have been okay. And I would have really prayed that my ex got an Ed. (laughs) But just coping with withdrawal and all that kind of stuff in that situation is insane. I cannot imagine it. And then as you hit that season four, you just think the show is going to be about Nick. Madison's not here anymore. And Nick's going to be the star. Nick and Alicia. It's about the Clark family. And then Mm -hmm. then he Mm -hmm. dies. (laughs) that was not the case and i remember feeling really pissed off at charlie but not at the actress or anything why did you have to do that i get it but at the same time you're like but they were so kind to you and this other guy was a (laughs) shitbag but But not to her he murdered in this in pretty gross way shoving him down on the deer antlers that was pretty gruesome and it was pretty vicious Everybody in this world is capable of vicious things, and she's got to know that. So why wouldn't she think they would go for her next? She's a kid. What the fuck does she know? Yeah. She has limited life experience, and most of it's been shit. I had a little bit of anger there, but it went away shortly thereafter because you go through the grief with Alicia. So by the time she was willing to forgive Charlie, I was like, all right, fine. I guess. I guess this is what we're doing now. We're forgiving Charlie. It's fine. (laughs) No, it took me three years. It took until you met Lex and did an interview with Lex. <laughs> Probably before like, or after that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like I said, my number one and number two are interchangeable. So I'm just going to say my number two we've already covered, which is June puts John down. I don't think we need to discuss it anymore. I think that's pretty much <laughs> been, I think it's pretty much been covered. It's the worst, but there's a part that's even sadder. My number two is Charlie Kills Nick. We kind of just covered that too. <laughs> she had to make sure she put Charlie in there. She's like, Charlie kills Nick. Yeah. Fuck Charlie. Charlie kills Nick. Yeah. See, this it round's going pretty quick. It is. My number two is we've already discussed as well. It's Ophelia's death. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I love Daniel, so I got to represent mm-hmm. my, my man. It's the fact that Daniel gets there too late not days late not hours within minutes and minutes it's crazy madison's reacting to ophelia dying she's like no no no, wake up wake up wake up for her it's out of desperation Mm -hmm. i need help and daniel is not gonna help us if you are dead it's purely selfish you need to stay alive your dad's gonna kill me (laughs) fair because if i was in her situation i would probably (laughs) feel the same way when you're watching it In your head, you're saying the same thing. No, 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 no. Just hold on until your dad gets there. Mm -hmm. And it's not because I'm worried about them getting the water or access to the dam or any of that kind of Mm -mm. stuff. Mm -mm. But I wanted that reconnection to happen. And honestly, it's probably for the best because Ophelia didn't really want anything to do with it. I don't think at that point in her life, she was dying. So she's like, okay, fine. But prior to that, he lied to me my whole life. There was all of the complication there. Yeah, but all of our know. parents lie to us all so the time sad. about Wait, things. You do. Put some pants on. No. <laughs> <laughs> I would. I would. <laughs> yeah, they lie to you about the Easter bunny. They don't lie to you about being a contract killer or any of that kind of shit. I mean, it was like big stuff. If that was part of your history, wouldn't you? 
want to keep well, that from you your kid, to. I, yeah, you'd have I to. absolutely would. Until they turn into a teenager and brought some little ass white boy or girl to the house. And then I'd be like, I used to be a killer. So until it's time to uh, bring them into the family business. Exactly. Well, the reason <laughs> it's so sad is because she didn't pursue her own life and her own dreams because she just couldn't leave her family. Mm. They weren't capable. And then she mm -hmm. finds out the whole time that they were they've yeah. been entirely capable screw him don't talk to him then <laughs> fine i get that i didn't talk to my dad for 11 years now luckily i had the opposite happen i did get to talk to my dad and reconnect with him before he died i can't imagine mm -hmm. him passing and not having done that honestly that storyline is just it's so freaking sad mm -hmm. to kind of bring it back to the sad june putting john down one of the sadder things about that scene was they never got to reconnect after he left her she never knew why he left or what happened he just left and then he was dead and he never knew that she cared she was excited and they could have talked and worked things out but they just never took that opportunity and then they never got to see each other again alive yay this is fun I hate this. I don't ever want to do this again. Who picked this topic? This is horrible. So my number one is June Reed's Charlie John Kills Boy. Nick. Oh, okay. <laughs> and Nick, I already had that one. That was no, my I'm, number I'm one. June Reed's John's letter because that legitimately made me sob with her as she was reading it. I don't even care about the connections with Senior and everything. First of all, the words in John's letter. Oh my God, please. It was just gutting. Mm -hmm. and watching june read it and the, her reaction to it and coming to terms with it after we know that she's held on to this letter for so long without reading it because it's john's last words the last thing he'll ever say to her and i can see why she'd want something to hold on to well there was maybe some fear too that it wasn't gonna be what she wanted it to be that he was it, mad it could have been his grocery list <laughs> well it could have been fuck you you should have left you're missing out on all this baby <laughs> <laughs> when she did finally give in and read it it makes me cry every time jenna said that she she legit it was all real emotion reading that letter that was all mm -hmm. i believe it her my number one is a fork in the road I put that as my number one because it was a choice that was made. Mm. When somebody gets bit and turns or dies and turns, you have to put them down. That's an obligation and you have to do that. But when John chose to leave, it broke my heart and they filmed it perfectly. The way John and June say goodbye to each other, you think they're heading the same direction. And then all of a sudden John starts going this way and you're like, what? No, what? no. No, 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 no. It's really similar to the shot in Diverged in season mm -hmm. 10 of The Walking Dead. I pointed that out yep. in an episode of The Walking our <laughs> Squawking our Squaw Dead coverage. Since we're talking about John and June, how they brought everything back to Laura, this full circle where they all ended up back at the cabin and mm. all of the parallels and the callbacks and everything they had, even the opening shots and the shots that they used in the door, even though I can't mm. watch the door. I've watched it twice. I just can't watch it anymore. It, it hurts me too much. But I do remember the, the way they shot some of the scenes. Everything were just exactly like Laura. It was all the callback. So I do appreciate that they did that. That's one of the things that makes these shows great. All the little in things and the Easter eggs and the callbacks and the parallels that we can find. I appreciate that all of the TWDU, they all take the time to do that for the fans. My number one is John Dory Jr.'s death. Oh. We've talked about it. I screamed at the TV. I hated Dakota. I wanted to reach through the screen and kill her myself. Even angrier, given the hope that June was at the cabin and that's where he's floating down to and she's going to save him and everything's going to be okay. And I remember watching it. I'm by myself. Travis doesn't give two shits about what I'm watching. <laughs> and I just look at him and I'm like, they fucking killed him i was so angry i was so upset because i love carrot so much that's it no he's gone no he's off the show and he's the best character what am i supposed to do now okay but now i have daniel what so do it was, i do it, it was an exaggeration but at the yeah, time i just it, 
Well, no, whoever <laughs> thought, Bane. we never thought they would do it. The character that everybody loves without I fail. Know. Everybody loves John. I was so thankful, though. That was one of those moments that did not get spoiled for me. So many big moments in the Walking Dead universe have been spoiled. And I luckily have avoided it for a very long time by not being active in the fandom, which I hate to say that the fandom can be very detrimental in that way because it takes mm -hmm. away a lot of things. Me knowing that Madison was coming back, the people who watched that episode without knowing that, that was so cool to see their reactions because they're like, what? We knew months in advance. It was not the big, exciting thing that we want it to be. But John's death was one of those moments that was like, oh my God. There's no way that just happened. When he lifted his head, even as he's lifting his head, I'm like, okay, he's okay. He's, he's okay. fine. June's going to save him. He gets his face all the way up and you're just, oh, oh. again, mm -hmm. by seconds, he, he was very fresh. He can't have been a walker for very long. June just missed him by minutes. She wouldn't have been able to save him, but she at least no, could have said, said goodbye to, to a live John. Yeah. Yeah. I love that they went, the poetic route with it and brought everything back to the cabin and everything back to Laura. Because for me, Laura is where all of this started. That was the first episode I watched of anything. And they did that just for you. I like to think that. <laughs> <laughs> Jenna ruined it by saying it was planned in 2019. Damn it. <laughs> Dave sent me a pre list, but he never sent me the refined list. So I'm just going to read all of Dave's answers. Oh, okay. okay. Rufus dies. Mm. wow right mm -hmm. dave put it on there and we didn't wow okay chris manawa dies nick clark dies he doesn't have any of these in order either so i'm not numbering them madison dies <laughs> <laughs> quote quote marks are his john dory dies charlie has cancer grace's baby is stillborn travis uh. manawa dies he put Howard and Virginia die on his list. <laughs> <laughs> what a goober. Yeah, I didn't even think of the baby. That was horrible. Yeah, well, I'm not a huge I feel like I was too fans, distracted so. by, I was too distracted by other things. Like all the Pepto-Bismol? The heavy pink was very distracting. I was super off-put that that episode aired on Mother's Day. I was almost disgusted by it rather than sad. I had a lot of other feelings surrounding that episode rather than sadness. I'm just so frustrated with Morgan giving up the key that he knows is a key to a fucking nuclear submarine mm -hmm. because Grace is screaming at him. Grace just woke up from a fucking fever drink. What's going on? You do. You're awake. You are lucid. Why the... F I, that irritated me so bad. I hated that whole episode. Hated. It was very polarizing. I like the dream part when she sees everybody in the dream. Strand mm -hmm. and uh, Daniel getting along and the old men. That was fun. <laughs> Christian... Contreras, this is his list. His number seven is John Dory's death. His six is Nick. Five is Travis's death. Four is Ophelia's death. Three is Grace's baby's death. His two is when LA goes dark. Mm. Oh, wow. His, okay. His number one is when Morgan was shot and left to die. Mm. <laughs> as someone who does not hate Morgan, because I do not, that was actually very sad to me as well. I did not like it. I wasn't sad at all because I never, ever, for even a second, thought he was going to die. All right. How are you getting out of this one? I wasn't sad about Although I didn't hate Morgan at that time. I just didn't find it very sad. I just watched John and June and Wendell and Sarah all get separated. So Morgan getting left to die was last on my well, list. Well, that whole episode was sad, though. Everybody's yeah. getting separated and one of the characters is left with a fate unknown. And it's sad. Our very own David Strand. His seven is Charlie getting radiation sickness. His number six is John Dory, the fork in the road. His number five is Daniel realizing he's not well. That was also mm. very sad. Mm -hmm. His number four is Nick's death. He accidentally sent his text right then. So he says, premature sending. That's never happened to me before. <laughs> <laughs> I told him it happens to everyone eventually. No worries. Just relax and try again. <laughs> His number three is John Dory trying to solve the murder for Virginia and realizing he's a good man in a bad world. Aww. His number two is Liza Ortiz's death. Which one of you guys had it's that like, one? I did. It was Rachel. It was Chris. Yeah, it was Rachel. Chris's mom. And his number one is Morgan and company forced to call Virginia for help and surrendering their freedom in the process. Ooh, yeah. Brian 
His number seven is Chris Manawa's death. Six is Griselda Salazar's death. Five is Travis Manawa's death. Number four is John Dory's death. Number three is Nick Clark's death. Number two is Madison Clark's death. Quotations are his. <laughs> And number one is Ophelia Salazar's death. I think we covered all of those, didn't we? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mitchell. Number seven is Liza's death. Number six is Travis's death. Number five is Strand losing Abigail. Number four that is Grace. That was actually Lee. really sad. That was a good. Mm-hmm. That was a good episode. He's talking to the Russian astronaut. I, I've actually <laughs> seen part of that because somebody it's referenced good. it after the episode on The Walking Dead when the satellite fell. His number four is Grace losing her baby. Number three is Madison and company having to leave their home. His number two is Daniel realizing he's sick. And number one is John Dory's death. I would say by far John Dory's death is going to be number one across, not across the board, but. On everyone's list, at least. Charlotte replied this time. Yay. Seven, when the caravan had to surrender to Virginia. Number six is Ophelia's death. Number five, when everyone thought Madison died. Not Madison's death, when everyone thought Madison <laughs> died. Isn't it true that usually it's the reactions that are sadder than the death mm-hmm. itself? Mm-hmm. Four is Daniel's diagnosis. Three is Nick's death. Two is Grace losing Athena. And number one is John's death, specifically the scene where June puts him down. Mm. She covered all their bases. <laughs> <laughs> Crystal Jordan says, seven, the first family the Clarks meet where the parents are poisoning the kids. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Where they have the special pills, the magic pills. They're a nature preserve or a little house. He's a ranger and they have two mm-hmm. kids. And the mom begs Madison to take the kids with the, with her and all of them end up dying. If only she waited eight years. They all ended I know, right? They all end up dying. It's horrible. It's, horrible. <laughs> it's foreshadowing. Yeah. <laughs> Please take so She kid. didn't want to do it then. No, she she did try, but one of the kids said no. I have to go back and watch Fear. This was hard because I haven't watched Fear a bajillion times. Her number six is Travis's death. Five is Alicia dying and left alone. Mm. Number four is Grace's sickness. Number three is Nick's death. Number two is Charlie and Alicia in the hurricane. Number one was Ophelia's death. Mm. And that is it. That is our top seven, our squawking seven for tonight. The top seven saddest moments in fear. By far, John Dory's death in June having to put him down was not everybody's saddest, but it was everybody had it on there. All of our lists were quite similar. John was on there. Nick, Mm -hmm. even Liza ended up on a few lists. Mm -hmm. So now that everybody's sad, you all can (laughs) kick rocks. (laughs) Thank y'all for coming. What's on your list? Email us. Send us a DM. Put it in the comments. Tell us what your top seven saddest moments are. Is it John and June? Is it Charlie and Nick? What about the kid on the raft? Forgot about that one. It's from Flight 457. Was that the name of it? Anyway, it's the webisodes that tied in to the actual series where the girl has her burnt brother. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was sad because they just cut it loose. Say, see ya, sucker. Well, let us know what your saddest moments are and join us for the next one.